Right. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for the first webinar of the year for Parsons TKO. Um, we really try to um, develop some topics around things that are really actionable for your organization um, and your role. So we're really excited to be able to share um, Technology Roadmapping 101 with you today. Um, we also wanted to let you all know that we have designed a workshop around the subject matter that we'll be talking about today today. So um, we'll be sending out some information afterwards in the follow up to um, get some more information from um, our team about how uh, that workshop could help you or your team. So I want to introduce the uh, gentleman who will be leading the discussion today. Uh, Eric Rojas is our senior strategist and John Harrison is our technical solutions producer. Um, they both have a wealth of knowledge and you'll be able to contact them directly afterwards as well. Um, feel free to drop any questions or comments in the chat. Um, but if we don't don't get time to address your questions, we'll make sure to follow up with you directly afterwards. So welcome, take it away. Great, thank you Nardos and welcome everybody. Nice to see some new and familiar faces here today. Uh, I'm Eric Rojas, I am a senior strategist at Parthens TKO. I'm coming at to you from uh, sunny today, Tacoma Park, Maryland, just outside of DC. And uh, yeah, I come from a background of uh, higher ed and uh, museum, um, uh, marketing technology. I spent my beginning of my career at a few universities uh, doing marketing there and then also um, uh, about 10 years at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum here in DC. So um, joined Parsons TKO a while back and really pleased to, to be working here and with, with all these folks and, and seeing all these new faces. Um, John, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm John Harrison, I'm a solutions producer at Parsons TKO. Um, I have uh, a background in marketing technology, working with uh, nonprofits, mission-driven organizations. Um, most recently came from Enterprise Community Partners, but I've also done work for AARP and a couple of other nonprofits as well. I have a background in information technology, instructional technology. Um, so this topic is uh, definitely top of mind for me. Thank you, Eric. No worries. Great, well, we'll then we'll get started here. Um, Feel free to submit a question to the chat if you'd like. Um, we'll try to come back to those towards the end. Uh, we do have a few or one or two. Uh, we'll be asking a few questions here and there. So um, please chime in when you get a chance. Uh, so we'll be talking today about um, the different types of roadmapping projects we've done before. And also, you know, what our process is, um, you know, how we uh, interact with, with mission driven organizations in this capacity, uh, love nonprofits, education institutions, advocacy organizations, trade associations, uh, you know, how, make, how we can help uh, work with your technology stack um, and make it work better for you and uh, your staff and your organization. Um, so we're excited to get started and uh, we'll and tell you all about it. Again, uh, we are here for uh, Technology Roadmapping 101, a uh, story for success. Um, want to talk at first a little bit about our company philosophy here at Parsons TKO, um, which provides a framework for how we work, right, and how we design our roadmaps and, and how we look at yours, right. Um, it's rooted in this sense of interconnectedness and based on people and systems that power your organization. Um, if you're like many of us, uh, you know, you're, you might be naturally uh, change focused, right, whether intentionally or unintentionally, right. Um, so I really like this, this model because it provides that framework for formulating and modeling, right, that, that change in a replicable and innovative way. Um, the roadmap is really a way to drive this concept forward over time, and it channels your current and existing structures into that path forward. So looking towards the future. Uh, and, you know, many organizations do evolve organically, right, when it's not too organized. Um, and this might be successful if you're fully staffed and you have that clear vision in place. But a lot of times you have to create that vision um, and really push you know, and, and encourage and, and collaborate with staff to get there. Um, it, all these pieces together help you know, figure out where you're, where you're going. Um, so why might one, might wanna, that, why might one <laughs> want a roadmap? Uh, you might have a change in leadership of your organization, a change in strategic direction. Uh, you might have a new tech team um, that, or a new, uh, a new unit that's come on board effect, that's affecting change. Um, that change might be tough. Uh, usually it can be. Um, you know, think of like a, an educational institution um, uh, and you might want to increase your, you know, business goals like increasing attendance or accelerating them. Um, and this roadmap process can help provide clarity 
about how to reach those goals. Um, you know, if you've already achieved this kind of growth and you've outgrown clearly the, the platforms or systems and processes you have in place, um, and you want to make sure you can support that and support your existing place, a roadmap is a good time, uh, a good experience for that for, to, to figure out where to go. And we recommend this kind of multi-year planning tool to find that next milestone um, to empower your new or existing strategic plan. So going back, right, if you've already grown and plateaued, um, it's all about consolidation too, right? So like figuring out a way to, to harness the, the and, and sit with the change that you've already used or you already got to, and then, you know, determine where you want to go next. So yeah, roadmaps are appropriate for these multi-year experiences. So certainly you'll need to plan ahead. Uh, there are many steps. Um, so breaking these phases apart into more digestible incremental pieces um, makes it easier to do, right? So we start usually with your current state and that sense of you know where you are right now and the uncertainty, um, and then move towards those nearer term priorities. The, uh, you know, what's up next in the next uh, 90 days, next year, right? And then we look beyond that too, right? So that future clearer vision that we help you, uh, you know, uh, get to. Um, so if you have any doubts about your next steps, uh, you need that clarified vision to get there. Uh, so many of these outcomes can be cloudy and your next step might actually be pretty vague, right? So you'll need to prioritize the path to get there just by that sheer amount of uh, data and systems and, and complexities in front of you. And so, you know, that's how we look at our different, uh, uh, the different tool sets and, and, and pieces in front of us. But, but when it comes to change and how we, you know, engage, how you engage with your audience, uh, progress is, you know, not always, uh, it, it's progress is, is forward, but it's not always upward, right? Um, it's ideally forward. Uh, it's, it's about maintaining that consistency of progress and then consolidating your efforts. Um, so when change takes hold, you have these uh, moments when you need your teams to get used to it. Uh, that's okay, right? You need to find that time to, to sit with change. Um, everyone needs to feel comfortable to move on to that next phase. And you need to give people the space to get there and build that into your roadmap too. People have that sense of change capacity and endurance, right? Or can, and finding ways to reconsolidate that 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 endurance. Um, so you know you've got to make sure you can sit with that value of investment uh, to really for some people feel it too. Um, you know, the, the, if a new process is coming in, or let's say you have a new uh, email platform that's been launched and it makes things easier for staff to get stuff out the door. Feeling that change makes uh, makes it makes it more comfortable. So in this diagram here, like that that dark green is that potential value, um, and the colors beneath in the phase are different phases, uh, containing realized value. When you invest uh, in that, you recoup it. And um, those flat lines don't necessarily mean that aren't investing monetarily, you know. But your the people out there will see the benefit. Um, this is also helpful for a lot of organizations with a lot of turnover. Um, you know, changing the way that you grow, excuse me, um, and investing in the way you grow uh, provides for that continuity. So building in like redundancy, documenting tasks, um, building a way for people to get adopted to platforms along the way, um, it really helps uh, new staff or and transition plans, right? So finding and, and consulting around the, everybody else's individual journey uh, along the way. So roadmaps provide this structure um, and a guide for yourself and for your organizations, right? Um, organizations involved through all of your work together. Uh, we make sure that that process is as organic and uh, make sure it's something that you can own, right? We want your organization to grow the way that it's supposed to grow, uh, you know, and, and like, like a naturally rooted idea. Um, we want it to stay in step with the way you work. It should be a plan that introduces these clear improvements along the way too that teams can get on board with. Um, for example, if you're maintaining your website, it's helpful to have your guiding vision in sight so you can align with partners and tune towards their needs um, as well as your audience's needs too, right? So communicating your path so it meets your audience's goals um, and your colleagues' goals too. And here's like a high level view about how we envision our path to our roadmap. Um, you know, we, we start by assessing, establishing these nuanced uh, strategic goals for your roadmap. Um, this can be really challenging. So, uh, you know, we work with you to, to, to refine 
and keep them relatively the, the guiding path for you. Uh, we talk to your stakeholders as well, learn their, their struggles, what their aspirations are, and you know what their manual tasks are, what, what, what's automated. Um, sometimes we learn a lot more in that process too. And then we you know, annotate all this and, and, and hold on to it to use it for the rest of our research and, and recommendations along the way. For that current state analysis, we provide like a, tool, a, a toolkit for documenting and exploring your current architecture of, and your technology. Um, and then we'll take a first pass at documenting those critical processes, um, the way the touch points of, of how you interact with your audiences, um, and then help you continue to add to these lists um, and the assessment structure you know, as you grow. I forgot to go back uh, one step. We also talk uh, inventory all of your systems as well. So every technology that uh, platform that you use, um, whether it's something that someone spun up on their personal credit card and then bill back to you. Um, you know, we talked that part of that interview process is this, is this us out um, where all those different tools and the things people rely on to get their jobs done. Um, tracking all that so we know what people are using is very helpful as part of this process of consolidate and uh, and also just, yeah, keep track of, of what's going out. Uh, a lot of organizations don't really know what their outreach is, uh, what one end of outreach could be doing. So being able to, to track and keep and keep an eye on and also work together to create a one voice, you know, in your organization is key here. Um, going back to that current state, um, right. So we will consolidate that and, and see what's happening right now. Um, the future state, is the vision of where you want to go. You know, what kind of services do you want to offer? How do you envision supporting your staff with all these technologies and technologies that you might want to implement in the future too? How do you want to communicate with your audiences? Um, how do you want to learn from them? We'll help you dream this vision. So, and then the final piece, the roadmap itself is that connective tissue, uh, summing up all of what we've learned and how you can get there. John, did you have anything you wanted to add here? Yeah, I would say like in, in doing, um, especially the stakeholder interviews uh, with different organizations uh, while I've been at Parsons TKO, it's, I think it's really enlightening for our clients to, to find out like, you know, what are the systems, what are the processes, who are the people that sort of own and manage, you know, all of these key systems that, that your organization is running. And it's, it's very enlightening for a lot of, a lot of the leaders and, and uh, core teams that we work with on, with our clients to find out that, you know, they're not just using 30 systems they're using 150 systems and many of them might be redundant. So it's, it's definitely um, an eye opener for all the organizations that I've worked with so far. Yeah, we, we find that that sprawl tends to happen. And sometimes you might have those redundancies where people have their own versions and nothing's talking to each other. So keeping track of all that um, is helpful, right? Uh, if, if even just to see how you're operating now. Indeed. So again, kind of going back to that sense of decision fatigue, you know, how do you figure out where you're going to go? There are so many options available. Um, and we're already dealing with a lot right now, too. Um, you know, we're not going to say a roadmap is a vacation, but it leads to a destination. Uh, you might wish to go to the beach. You might prefer mountains. Um, but so the roadmap is really that journey between how are you, you know, where you are now and how you get there. Yeah, and I wanted to just step in and provide this sort of real world analogy for what a roadmap and a future state vision is, because I know this can be a difficult concept to grasp at first, but it helps when you're talking to others within your organization to try to sell this effort for sure. Like I, I think of uh, like a Disney World analogy, right? So the roadmap might include a stop to visit relatives. You, perhaps you want to go camping at Yellowstone. And there's some questions that you need to ask when you're, when you're planning this future state vision or this destination. Do you have the right vehicle? You know, is it packed with the right things to take along your journey? Do you have a tent? Do you have sleeping bags? You know, do you have the route optimized so it's scenic and, and beautiful, but also not exhausting for your kids and the people that are going along with this journey? And I think this is where Parsons TKO can shine and help you sort of define that next two months, you know, the next quarter, the next year or three, and making that journey as valuable um, as possible as you're getting to that future state destination. Yeah, the, the kind of uh, packing, camping, right, all these different pieces and, and getting to your place, um, we'll probably touch on that a bit, but uh, that's, that's certainly part of how we uh, envision um, your path. 
you know, and so before you even find that path, that first part of it here, as we were talking about, you need to find the way you're going to get there. Um, and this might be limited by your capacity, um, by sheer just ability, right? Um, you know, you might need to walk, <laughs> you might need to run, you might need to take a train, right? Um, your time might be limited, you might have more time than you think. So, um, you know, it's really helpful to have someone out there, uh, like an organization like Parsons TKO, that has experience in this kind of work, um, where we can help. Um, and we find it's really helpful for organizations to learn what they're already good at. Uh, and sometimes you need another set of eyes to learn and, and to see that perspective. Uh, we help you discover your secret sauce so you can learn how to make it um, and you know help make different aspects of your, your outreach better, right? So you can make your email marketing better, which levels up marketing in general and help you reach those organizational goals. Um, if you need help convincing your C-suite executives, uh, we help you find that right path there too. So how do you, again, how do you process all this information? Um, we help you distill that wealth of information in front of you to focus on those aspects that lead to, to progress. Um, we're gonna copy and paste a, a link into the chat here to a blog post from, from Nate Parsons, who's joined us today as well, um, from, a, from a, recently, a recent blog post, I believe, uh, about how to create sustainable change through the roadmap process. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions about it, but um, we'll uh, step. So now we'll jump into our, our road mapping process, how we look at roadmaps. Um, it's firmly rooted in our engagement architecture philosophy. So we'll take a walk through that. Um, so what does, you know, what, where do we start, right? Uh, we start really with empathy. Uh, what does this look like? You know, we want these to be conversations. Every organization is different and we need to learn the way that you speak to do it. Um, internally too, right? You might have different silos that speak differently. <laughs> Knowing, uh, knowing how people use terms, what you know, uh, how, how people communicate, what people call certain systems or, or ways they work, or products even, this can separate pretty quickly when you're when you're siloed. So talking to people, stakeholder interviews, feeling out their aspirations and motivations. Uh, we also want to learn about who might be impacted by any change along the way, and if that you know if they're scared of that change or if they're excited by it. Um, you know, what skills might they have to learn to continue to succeed? Uh, we work internally on these, you know, oh, we're sorry, excuse me. How do we work internally on these aspects? You know, we build consensus and allowing that space for conversation to grow. So part of our interviews might be, you know, start out as a question, but it really turns into these natural flow where we, um, you know, suss out like, what are people looking for? Where do they, what, what do they want to see? Uh, where do they want their organization to grow and where are the pain, pain points or challenges at the moment? Um, you know, we identify these different allies or champions who might be along on this journey as well, um, as they will help us get the change done uh, and your organization get the change done down the line. So um, knowing what their motivations are, uh, where they're excited to jump in and help, uh, enlisting help is always great too, if people are excited by the process um, and they want to help, you know, they, they, should, they should be able to. And we don't just think about, you know, that the tools that are at their disposal, but also the ecosystem of tools, right? And how they're implemented and used. So for support, you know, this might be um, how are tools and platforms, right? Serviced by your IT department, um, who manages those features, who owns or administers each software, software, um, what departments is, are they in? Um, how, and you know, how do these interact? You know, is there a supporting mechanism through the integrations in place or, are they just manual processes that manual uh, integrations, right? Where people are just pulling the levers um, and uploading and <laughs> downloading and, and, and facilitating list transfers, right? Um, what integrations are impacted by any change? Will something need to be redone? Will it need to be replaced, redesigned, re-architected? Um, this might impact your you know, organization strategic goals like, like fundraising. Um, if you change uh, a fundraising system just before your end of year, uh, you know, campaign, um, you are going to have to rush and, uh, or you wait until after, you know, um, knowing how these might impact your timing, your goals, um, hoping to not impact or write anything negatively along the way, only try to improve. Um, you know, tactically, we're thinking about where's the best home for your organization's projects, you know, on the web, right? Content management systems, um, landing pages, microsites, um, 
for you know email for example how is your platform set up are your templates locked down are your audiences segmentations in place are they documented are they a black box um, do you have control over them? Do you want control? Are they centralized? Are your users using them themselves? All of these pieces of you know how people use your toolkit um, and who owns them, right, are really critical. Uh, back to that support mechanism too. You know, if IT is supporting um, an outreach tool, you know, what does that structure look like? If marketing is supporting it, if fundraising is supporting it, who is the person in place who administers? Are they well supported, and do they have the skills to do that? Um, you know, is your software set up in a way that allows end users to do that self-service work or is it all centralized? So looking at those aspects of how you use your toolkit, your platforms in place is really critical to seeing this bigger picture. Uh, you know, final point on this too, what needs to change and what is driven by um, the change of your, your contracts in place with some of these software? pieces of software. Some of them are license based off, you know, annual licenses, some are in the three year contracts. Um, they're tied to requirements too. Um, if you have an end date and you need to renegotiate, we need to know, you know, that needs to be part of this conversation as well. So knowing um, what those timelines look like and what restrictions you have. Now, next part here is the process oriented uh, part of our, our, our roadmap. Um, you know, our processes, that is the, the ways you get to your goals, uh, the, the steps you take um, to, to finish a product, um, are they optimized? Are they, you know, or are they the way they are because of technology problems or skill or um, the way we've done it? Uh, you know, we like to look at that and, and assess whether or not those can be optimized. Um, the roadmap preserves that expertise in place by trying to remove those difficulties that you might experience. So um, that's what we're focused on here. Um, there's a distinction between um, you know, that internal expertise and focusing on more impactful change, uh, not just because of you know, software doesn't connect. So you know, going back to John's uh, kind of camping analogy, uh, a trip to Disney World, I'm going to by default for I say Disneyland because I'm from LA, but like, you know, well, overall with it, right? Um, <laughs> You know, think about how you pack for that trip, um, you know, especially like when you get there, uh, you know, you need to plan, plan ahead for the luggage, the food, the water, the thing to keep your family uh, sustained, right, uh, and comfy. Um, you make sure you have everything packed, then you got to play a little bit of Tetris and get everything into your car um, and make sure it fits and then be able to unpack, untetris it uh, and take it, you know, out and out for the night so you can keep everyone comfy and cook the boots, all these pieces, right? These are all part of your processes and we help in, in, in it help you identify those within your organization. So that might be what steps are taken to build and to build an email. Um, what does that look like from the perspective of different organizations or different parts of your organization? Um, that's what we're looking at here and, and how will we try to document? So yeah, what will need to be learned? What new skills change? And yeah, um, what will change, right, by this. And then we look at your strategic goals and making sure that the the, skill, the tools you have in place, the people are, are also part of that, uh, part of the roadmap as well. So this might be branding and, and website and your the alignment with your website, uh, making sure that all those disparate channels, um, whether it's, again, email or social or, you know, direct, um, and these follow your branding guidelines. So you're speaking with one voice, unless there's a clear reason not to. Um, these might be fundraising goals. Um, so back to that point, excuse me, about uh, how technologies might impact that fundra those fundraising strategies. Again, uh, making sure the timing is right, making sure that the products that are supported by your fundraising platform um, actually support the, the, the task that you need to get done uh, in a streamlined way. If you're like, if you're an environmental organization or a conservation-based one, your outcomes might be firmly rooted in land acquired, right, or conserved or adapted for public use. So we'll make sure that's part of the consideration here as well. Um, and since many mission-driven organizations lack, some commonly lack sufficient resources, some of these unmet needs tend to revolve around these gaps. So we'd like to talk about these needs first and then see if there's a role for them already. Um, you know, we look at these different forms of resources. Staffing doesn't necessarily need to be full-time. 
Now think about a vendor or a freelancer or a consultant, something that's a little more flexible to provide those uh, spaces. And you know, many of you come from organizations with inspiring, creative experiences that drive your audience engagements, right? Um, your, the ways you interact and the touch points you make. You may have a really great email newsletter, uh, inspiring fundraising campaigns that encourage people to give or regular and exciting and, and compelling online events. Some of the more innovative fo folks have found ways to you know, capture data and analytics based on these interactions, right? Um, finding a way to funnel that. We're very interested in that. Uh, we're interested in how each of these align with your work and how do you create those impacts and how do you capture, track them? Uh, where is this data stored? How do you report on them? Uh, we want to find those individual touch points and the type of channel they're on um, and you know where that, which part of your audience those are as well and the metrics that align with them. We're really interested in those moments where those communications or outreach moments cross uh, departments, across channels. Those tend to shine a light on some of the more exciting uh, and also difficult moments, right? Um, when you have uh, an event and then there's also a fundraising opportunity, what does the handoff look like that? Look there. Um, how do those interactions occur? Are they smooth? Are they disruptive? What does it look like from the audience perspective? These, again, these tend to be the hard moments. So, um, you know, we, we, we like to look at those and, and uncover why exactly they might be hard and how to make them a little better. And then now we look at too, you know, how does, how does the roadmap, you know, shape the way your organization works? Uh, you could be actively doing all of the different things already um, and having these conversations, but without a guiding vision or a, an endpoint that you have envisioned, um, you may end up with a lot of incomplete work and not clear direction. So we want to create a, a space to talk about technology and these interactions, right? Uh, and outreach, uh, make this really concrete. Um, so you know, in the past, I worked when I worked at one of these organizations. I was part of a cross a cross start depart, excuse me cross departmental uh, technology team that we started. Uh, I was I was a junior member at the time, so I can't take the the full part of it. But I was one of the founding members of this of this group where we just started talking. Um, you know, and I was on the email side of the house, uh, but I had my hand in, in broader digital. Um, it brought the IT team together with um, technology stakeholders and marketing, and it was a wide range, right? It was uh, production folks, uh, senior staff, um, the space in between. Uh, very, just a, created a space for communication, which we find is a really great way to create a force for change along the way. John, do you have anything to add here? I think this is this is a great segue to really talking about what are some of those uh, common hurdles that uh, you know that organizations experience with um, standing up a roadmap. Great, yeah, please yeah. do. Yeah, and I think um, given that we have some time, I'd love to invite the audience uh, for some participation during this section, um, especially if you have some experiences to share, because we love listening and learning from from other other people's experiences. So, let's go to the next slide probably wondering why don't organizations have roadmaps you know and and this is really a lot about change management but some of the common barriers that we've seen based on you know the interviews we've done with stakeholders in organizations both small and large you know we see sometimes you know there's uh, entrenched structure entrenched structures so we see fences sometimes set too high for collaboration between departments and maybe one department doesn't know that they're preventing another department from from being productive or getting getting the message out that they need to get out get out using the technology at hand. Sometimes governance and accountability is very clear at the department level, um, but not across departments or at the greater organization. So you can get folks on board with your own team, you know. But how do you sell the roadmap this change to others? Sometimes you have executive sponsors, for instance, that may be skeptical. They want to understand the return on investment. Uh, they want to understand why we need to change, why we're doing something we've done for so long, for perhaps. And a lot, another one is, you know, building capacity. You know, how do you find the time for your core team, for your internal stakeholders to focus on planning the roadmap, you know, so that they can actually think about the pieces and parts, you know, with our help, of course, at Parsons, to, to help build that roadmap. So I'd love to pause here and, you know, invite uh, the, 
the people that have joined the webinar, you know, if you have any experiences, hurdles that you'd like to share within your organization, you know, that you've experienced when trying to plan uh, a roadmap or even just any kind of change management, I'll give it a few seconds if you want to either speak up or post in chat, that would be awesome. Anybody, any takers? All right, got a quiet bunch. Okay. Ah, okay. Karen, I'd, I'd say our issue is we're growing faster than our systems can support. Yeah, that's that's definitely that's definitely one that we see a lot of. We're working with an organization right now that uh, you know wants to pivot to an entirely um, remote workforce. They want to hire more people. They want to you know support more um, neighbor nonprofits and so on. And we're working on a roadmap with them. So you know, thinking about um, thinking about like. Do you have the systems in place to scale? I mean, that's a big one, right? Any other folks? Emily, we have a very small team that's used to doing things the way that they've done them. Yeah, and I have a slide on this, so that's a great one. And Patrick, there's interest in the roadmap, but unlikely to adhere to it from leadership. Very much putting out, putting the cart before the horse without intentionality type of leadership. And that's that's a great one. That's one one challenge we're we're dealing with right now with a couple of clients is really um, selling the roadmap and the future state vision to to the executive leadership because they're the ones that are going to provide air cover and support for making this thing a reality and 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 providing the budget and and all, and all that stuff. Yeah, and learning to slow down. Great, great one. Yeah, so let's go on to the next slide and talk a little bit more about this. So what's some of the resistance to change that we've seen, you know, that tried and true becomes the way that it's been done? You know, constituents at your organization, they have a high bar of expectation for how digital interactions and technology should serve them. You know, they're used to this from the pandemic, right? It's a ripe opportunity now for nonprofits to catch up with the Instacarts, the Ubers, the Amazons, and so on, and really bring those uh, digital first experiences into the nonprofit mission driven sector if they're not already there, because that's what people have come to expect, you know. I think. Um, with, along the lines of generational change, you know, this is an opportunity to lean in on the great resignation that we're hearing a lot about right now. You know, no doubt many organizations are hiring new faces. Many of them are digital natives. We work with orgs that have, you know, up to four or five different generations of employees, you know, from boomers all the way to Gen Z. And a natural outcome of this um, is that some of those entrenched silos are going to start to degrade because there's new ways of thinking and new expectations of doing work. And, you know, we found an exciting trend in our staff interviews that we've done that these newcomer, newcomers all almost always know of new ways to work. You know, they've used systems that work better than the systems they've inherited. Um, and they've seen the power of data, right? So. This is all stuff that can help bolster the case for your roadmap. Um, can your organization explain why it's done the way that it's been done? I mean, that's a big one. Um, you know, if not, can you learn from your new staff and bring their ideas along into this journey? And how do you make sure that these new people, you know, that have uh, diversity of ideas and so on, have a seat in the vehicle? And how do you build capacity into the roadmap so the effort uh, feels attainable and possible. Those are really, really important. Um, and Parsons TKO is expert at this. How can you make space for creativity and innovation as well as you're moving along this uh, roadmap? Can you do the next slide? So budgeting, I mean, that money is, is a big one, right? You know, we've heard from some organizations that building the technical sophistication that constituents have come to expect can be expensive, right? So getting consensus on the order of operations, what we're paying for, the priorities, and, and everything like that is top of mind. But, you know, time is money. You know, new systems and processes can be costly. So how much can you fit in your vehicle as you travel along the road? How many folks are along for the ride and can help, right? Parsons TKO has worked with several clients to sort of help democratize their efforts a bit more. So there's a shared sense of ownership and cost. So the value can be made more clear to your organization. 
some of the things that we've explored with uh, several clients with great success is like building coalitions to, to help make the case and build momentum. You know, often these are things that haven't existed at organizations before. And I'm talking about like technology working groups, technology stewardship committees, and so on. And they can be a part of the core team that Parsons TKO is working with, but it could also be subject matter experts in your organization. You know, these people can help define what new systems need to do. They can set goals, you know, and they can work uh, cross departmentally to potentially share in the cost of standing up these systems and making integrations more useful. Like, you know, if you're trying to integrate, say, a marketing platform and a philanthropy plat platform, and you're currently working in silos, the roadmap is an opportunity for you to come together and 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 bring value to both of your teams and sort of break down some of those silos that we've talked about. Also, you know, you're going to have better data out of this roadmap. Um, you're going to have fantastic reporting and dashboards that that can align with your organizational KPIs, um, both your departmental ones and perhaps your organizational ones. This is something that a lot of organizations don't think about: is how can how can this roadmap bring um, value and tie in to your strategic plan, perhaps, or your mission? So these groups can also help bridge the understanding gap. Uh, you know between departments. And I know we talked about educating executives and address those sort of gotcha moments that might not be so clear to, to a department or to a leader, right? Like, why should I do this? What's the return on investment? Uh, we, we have done this, you know, and we can bring this to you, to your organization. Also, you know, if a time consuming manual process is prone to errors in your current state, or perhaps the metrics are really hard to get at and extract and understand, the roadmap can shine a light on the way that it's been done and provide a spark and appetite for, for new change. And, you know, we, we're also helping organizations. I know uh, some folks will say, well, we're too small for a roadmap, right? Well, we've worked, we've done small roadmaps for, for, for smaller organizations, you know, and, and some of the things will help with smaller organizations is like thinking about what kinds of things are free for you to use right now. What kind of things can you demo? What can you try out? You know, in the CRM and email outreach world, for instance, you know, many products are free to try out or given at a significantly reduced cost. And Parsons is really good at understanding the limitations around what those systems are and making sure that you have a plan for scalability around using these platforms so that your future state vision can be supported and it's not compromised by the limitations on something that's related to your budget. So, you know, camping analogy here is like, you know, if you're glamping in a cabin, right, that's a very different set of equipment than you would take um, in your car for a backwoods tent camping where there's bears in the woods, right? So this is the kind of thing that we're really good at helping out, uh, um, thinking about the planning, the budgets, the tools, and the resources needed to really make that uh, roadmap most successful. Yeah, and I, and I just wanted to jump in here too, you know, part of the providing that spark and appetite for change, right? The uh, the roadmap helps bring that momentum as part of that process, right? When people start to hear about a roadmap happening, they generally want to be a part of it. Um, so there's also like a, a cultural force that happens that that can help make that, you know, case uh, and, and change hearts and minds along the way, right? Making sure that people are aligned with it. Um, and if they want to be aligned with it, they can be part of that process. So yeah, the, the technology working groups that can be in place, um, getting different people involved at different places where they can step out of their day-to-day -day work and, and think about the bigger picture or the next place. It's inspiring, right? So thinking about that and providing those spaces um, help get people along on the journey. Thanks, Eric. And I think we're almost there, right? Yeah, we, we are. So uh, thanks, folks. Um, you know, I can't, I can't wrap up here today without any, uh, any funnies. So, um, you know, you can't really change the past but you can plan for the future. So um, if you have a roadmap with you, helps you where you want to go. Yeah, and we're hoping everybody on, uh, gets the, the back to the future. I know we've shown that to some people and they've been like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Look it up if you haven't yet. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's uh, time you know, for you to start preparing and thinking about your own roadmap. Uh, let us know if you need any help at all. Um, we're happy to be part of your journey. And you can reach out to us at any time if you have any questions or feel free to jump in right now if you have any uh, open questions at all.
Art. All with that, um, yeah, feel free to drop any questions in. We'll be here for a few more minutes. Um, thanks again for, for joining us today, everybody. Uh, we know uh, your time, your your rest period during during lunch hours or morning hours is tight. Every day, every week is busy. So we appreciate that you were able to join us for this uh, brief period of time uh, in your